you know, state of California obviously has been pretty um, restrictive during the COVID um, pandemic. And for a lot of locals who are much more conservative than the California government overall, you know, that's felt a real betrayal of their rights. Mm -hmm. Um, So for me, you know, I want to understand how that feels. You know, I want to understand how it feels to feel like your business is at risk or, you know, your constitutional rights have been betrayed by a politician you would never have voted for. And maybe the majority of your community would never have voted for. You know, I don't think Shasta County, um, you know, majority of Shasta County wouldn't vote for the governor we have, right? Um, So we can definitely see that humanity aspect and really seek to understand it and write about it, right? What does it mean to be constitutionalist? What do people mean when they use that term? Mm -hmm. How has this affected their lives? Let's get their stories. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, you know, a lot of the statements that have been made in a public setting in Shasta County um, have gone viral nationally because there have been threats of violence and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, at people essentially calling for the potential of a civil war and saying, you know, if things don't change, that they're willing to, you know, fight in the streets. And mm-hmm. so those kinds of statements, you know, while we can say, I, I can I can understand where you're coming from right. and I can report on what you think is wrong with the COVID restrictions and I can report on constitutionality and all of those things, which are very important to do, Um, Because that's representation, you know, that's the people having a voice. Um, But at the same time, for me, you know, you you have to draw a line at threats of violence and Mm -hmm. say that that that's actually not okay. Um, Mm -hmm. And so then that cuts complicated in terms of how do you refer to people? You know, Mm -hmm. um, the Department of Homeland Security calls people who threaten violence over issues like this domestic extremists. Mm -hmm. Do we call these people extremists in our news media organization? You know, why or why not? Mm-hmm. Um, do we do we call people QAnon conspiracy theorists, or do we say that they believe in QAnon? You know, mm-hmm. um, yeah, these big are, difference. Yeah, mm-hmm. these are those you know very tricky, um, and and maybe it doesn't feel tricky to someone else, but. You know, imagine what it feels like to be called an extremist when you feel like you're fighting for what you believe is right. Yeah. And then at the same time, imagine how it feels to be to have somebody who's threatened your life just be called an activist. You know? yeah. mm-hmm. So, you know, both ways, there's going to be really strong feelings. And that's where we have to go. Like you said, you can't be just feelings based about it, you know, where you have to go back to, you know, what are the facts about what kind of speech is protected about, you know, what public discourse looks like, how what the Constitution was meant to to offer and provide to us and all of this historical analysis. And then how did these kinds of statements make, you know, less privileged people feel or minorities or how, you know, like even if somebody doesn't believe in COVID restrictions themselves, maybe they have the means to get COVID and get better. Mm -hmm. And then there's other people who don't have health insurance or don't have access to a hospital or have yeah. a pre-existing health condition, you know, so... Have yeah. the ability to leave work, you know, mm-hmm. like yep. paid time off or, you know, whatever yep. that is. That could be, like, hugely yeah. detrimental potentially. Yeah, mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So going back to, like you said, you know, that fact-based stuff that's, like, what's the context? What's the historical precedent? What do legal experts say? You know, um, how how are public meetings meant to be run? What laws govern pu- public meetings, etc.? cetera? Mm. You know, we have to look at those kinds of things. Otherwise, I can just decide... This person's an extremist, and then I call them an extremist, um, or I can decide, you know, I don't really want to call them an extremist, and then I don't call them, and either way can be dangerous. 